Welcome guys. In this video, we are going to make inferences about population variance and we'll build confidence intervals for population variance. As in previous video, when we were building confidence intervals for population mean, we'll start by looking at point estimator. Sample standard deviation is given as S squared and is equal to squared deviations from sample mean divided by n minus one. So as you can see, in denominator here, we have n minus one, and you may be asking yourself a question, why do we use n minus one? instead of n as in the formula for population standard deviation. So the reason for that is S squared presented in this form where we have n minus one in denominator uh, is unbiased estimator. Unbiased estimator for population variance. Uh, now let's show why, why is that true? In other words, so let's show why, uh, let's show that bias of S squared is equal to zero. So this correction where we use N minus one in denominator instead of N is known as Basel's correction. So let's start by by assuming um, what would happen if we were to use, let's call it S squared biased, if we were to use an estimator of the following form, where we have N in denominator. So let's assume that this is our estimator for Sigma squared and will show that this estimator is a biased one. So to show that this estimator is biased, we have to show that expected value of S biased squared is not is equal to sigma squared. Uh, so let's start, uh, let's factor out um, one over N then, since expected value is linear. Now let's apply the following trick. Let's subtract mu from xi. Then we had to add another mu and we are going to group other mu with uh, this x bar here. So by doing so, we didn't change anything. So this is equal to one over N. And now let's open up the brackets here. So we'll end up with XI minus mu squared minus two. XI minus mu multiplied by X bar minus mu plus X bar minus mu squared. Now let's uh, work with our terms here. Um, Let's open up the brackets for sigma sign here. So let's distribute the sigma sign over our terms. So we will end up with expected value. So to be more specific, we should have 
expected value of this sum. Then we will have expected value of the following sum i from 1 to n of xi minus mu squared minus 2. Uh, now here, look, x bar minus mu is invariant of i, so we can uh, factor it out as a coefficient. So here is our second term plus the last term here is sum um, sum i from 1 to n. And if we take a closer look at this term here, we see that it is invariant of i. So we can factor it out. So we'll have sum from 1 to n of ones. All right, now um, this is simply equal to n then. Uh, what else can we notice here? Now let's take a closer look at this term over here. Uh, let's distribute this sigma sign. So we will end up with sum of x i's i from 1 to n minus sum from of i from 1 to n of mu, which is going to be equal to n mu. All right, and let's present this as x bar. Then this is, a, this is equal to x bar multiplied by n. So this is n x bar minus n mu. Okay, then. So we will we will end up with one over n sum. Uh, let's not touch this term for now. We'll work with it a bit later. So we will have sum of sigma i from one to n, xi minus mu squared minus two x bar minus mu multiplied by n multiplied by x bar minus mu here. So we can see this term is simply 2n x bar minus mu squared plus next term is n uh, multiplied by x bar minus mu squared. Then canceling out this with that, we will end up with the following expression. Now this is equal to, uh, let's open up the brackets and distribute uh, expected value over our terms here. So we'll have one over n expected value of sum from one to n expected value of xi minus mu squared minus, so this ends will cancel out, then we'll have expected value of x bar minus mu squared. All right, uh, this term here, uh, this is by definition variance of x. Uh, this is variance of random variable xi. Uh, we know that xi's follow distribution with variance equal to sigma. So then we'll end up with sum i from one to n of sigma squared minus. Now this term here, let's work a little bit on that term. So we'll have expected value of x bar minus mu squared. 
Now this is by definition variance of random variable X bar, which is equal to variance of sum of X size over N, factoring out one over N squared, one over N as one over N squared will end up with sum of variances of those X size. This sum runs from one to N and variance of each random variable X size is equal to sigma squared. So this is N sigma squared over N squared and is equal to sigma squared over N. So we can replace this with sigma squared over N. Now this sum runs from one to N. So this is N sigma squared over N. So we'll end up with sigma squared minus sigma squared over N. So this is equal to sigma squared uh, one minus one over N. Now we have shown that expected value of S squared biased is equal to sigma squared. Let's write this down in different form. Let's write this down as N minus one over N. So we have shown that if we use uncorrected, uncorrected estimator for population variance with N in denominator, this is biased estimator. Okay, so there is a quick fix to that. We know that linear uh, expected value is a linear operator. Uh, so to make um, expected value of this term to be equal to sigma squared, then we can multiply and divide a squared biased, uh, multiply it by N and divide by N minus one such that here, this will factor out as a coefficient and we will have N and minus one multiplied by N minus one over N sigma squared, which will be equal to sigma. Now, in this case, if we add this correction here, that estimator will be unbiased estimator for population variance. So let's write this down. So N unbiased, S unbiased, or also known as uh, sample standard deviation or sample variance is equal to N, N minus one, S squared biased. And if you recall, S squared biased was equal to sum of squared deviations from mean divided over N. So now those two will cancel out, which gives us a standard form of sample variance with N minus one in denominator. All right, guys, uh, even though sample variance is unbiased estimator for population variance, um, it's not an easy choice to use um, sample variance instead of this biased estimator. Even though this biased estimator is biased, and we have sh uh, shown, uh, we have calculated its bias here. Um, even though it is biased, uh, this estimator uh, is sometimes used since this estimator has a lower variance, lower variance than this unbiased estimator. So when choosing this unbiased estimator for population variance, we are making a trade-off. Um, 
this even though this is unbiased, it has a larger variance than this estimator with n in denominator. So it's not all, always an easy choice to, to whether which estimator is best. However, this one is the standard one and uh, most widely used. All right, so we found unbiased estimator for population variance, which is sample, the sample variance is squared. Uh, it is our point estimator. However, as we discussed in our previous lecture, we would rather use confidence intervals to make inferences about our population. So our next step is going to be building confidence intervals for population variance. So we are going to start with an introduction of chi-squared distribution, which is going to arise uh, in a few moments when we will try to build confidence interval for population variance. So if G is equal to sum of Xi's, where Xi's are standard normal, a sum of squared Xi's, where Xi's are standard normal, and Xi's are IID, so uh, they are independent, identically distributed, then G is set to follow chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. So the notation is following G, follows chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom, where n is sample size. All right, so um, as in case with student t distribution, chi-square distribution is, a, is in fact a family of distributions uh, characterized by degrees of freedom. So here are some examples of chi-square distribution for different degrees of freedom. So here is for degrees of freedom equal to one, green is for degrees of freedom equal to two, and so on. All right, and we can see that chi-square distribution is a skewed distribution. It of course takes on only positive values since this is uh, as equal to sum of standard normals. Now uh, let's build confidence interval for population variance. Okay, so let's assume that we have X size. Those are IEDs that follow normal distribution. Uh, with some mean mu and variance sigma squared. So basically, let's assume that we have the following problem at hand. Uh, let's assume that we have some population with unknown mean and unknown variance. And we would like to build the confidence interval uh, for population variance. Uh, we draw those IADs, those N sample, sampling points from our distribution. Uh, let's add another assumption that uh, our population follows normal distribution. So uh, PDF is normal. Okay. Um, in case when in more general case, when we assume non-normality for distribution of population, uh, this method that we are going to present now using chi-square distribution isn't valid since we'll be working with the sum of um, squared standard normals. And if those are not standard normals, then there is the sum of xi squared isn't going to follow chi-squared distribution. Uh, however, um, in this course, we are not going to cover a case uh, for interval estimation for population variance when we assume non-normality. Um, if we want to take a deeper look 
into that matter you can read on bootstrapping. Uh, this is a reassembling technique that is used to make inferences in case when um, uh, distribution of population isn't normal. All right. So uh, we have those IADs that are normal, then Xi minus mu over sigma, let's call it Zi. Those Zi's are then standard normal. Uh, and then we, if we take a look at the sum of Zi squared, those are going to follow chi-squared distribution uh, with degrees of freedom n, uh, with degrees of freedom of n. Okay. All right, so uh, let's come back here. Let's substitute xi minus mu over sigma instead of the i's here. We'll end up with xi minus mu over sigma squared. This follows chi squared distribution with n degrees of freedom. Now let's take a look at the terms that we have here. Mu is unknown and sigma is also unknown. Uh, so we have problem right now, if we were to proceed, um, we would like to build confidence interval for sigma squared, uh, but we also have another unknown term here. So we would like to get rid of um, mu here. This can be done by replacing mu with unbiased point estimator X bar. Uh, however, in case, when we do this operation, we lose one degree of freedom. I will explain why in a second. So we are going to substitute X bar instead of unknown mu. So we are replacing population mean with sample mean. So now this is going to follow chi-square distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. The non-formal explanation why we lose one degree of freedom uh, here is following. Let's assume that uh, you are throwing a die and you don't know whether this die is unbalanced or, uh, or maybe a fair die. Let's assume that uh, you are throwing this die uh, four times. For instance, you got six on the first toss, you got uh, four on a second toss, and let's assume, let's assume that you got two on your second toss. And now let's assume somebody uh, tells you that this die is in fact a fair die, meaning that um, mean um, expected value of numbers that appear on each toss is equal to uh, 3.5. So this is, uh, this is true for a fair day. Uh, is that going to help you make a prediction about your last toss? Well, not really, right? Since uh, even if your die is fair, your last outcome may be any number from one to six. Now, let's assume that um, instead of telling that uh, this is a fair die, and in other words, population mean is equal to 3.5, someone mentions you that X bar is equal to 3.5, meaning that your sample mean is equal to 3.5. Now here, uh, you can use that information uh, to make a prediction about your last toss. Now your last toss is going to be fixed. Uh, since this sum here, plus value of a fourth toss, let's call it x4, should be equal to 3.5. Uh, 
So this is uh, four multiplied by 3.5, which is 14 minus four, 10 minus six, four minus two. So X4 is, should be equal to two. Now, if someone mentions you that X bar is equal to 3.5, you can quickly find X4, meaning that here, here, this is the point where you lose one degree of freedom. This, defini uh, this explanation is non-rigorous, uh, but it's quite nice and simple explanation. However, if someone mentions you that this is a fair die and population, uh, population mean is equal to 3.5, then that's not going to help you to make inferences about your last toss. So due to similar reason here, when we replace mu by X bar, we are losing one degree of freedom. Okay, now, uh, now let's recall formula for uh, sample, sample variance, which is equal to uh, sum of X size minus X bar squared uh, over N, and n minus one. Okay, now uh, let's use that. Let's replace our sum here with n minus one multiplied by s squared then. So we have sigma squared in denominator. Uh, sigma squared is invariant of phi here. And then this follows chi squared distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. Now let's take a look at plot of PDF of chi-squared distribution. It is a right skewed distribution defined for positive values. Let's assume this is chi-squared. Uh, for let's say 10 degrees of freedom. Now, if we want to build 95% confidence interval, then we would like 95% lying in this area here. Uh, which corresponds to one minus alpha multiplied by 100% confidence level when alpha is equal to 0.05. Now let's use the following notation for uh, quantiles of chi-square distribution. Uh, so this is chi-squared uh, with n minus one degrees of freedom. So subscript, the first entry here is degrees of freedom and second entry is going to show us percentile. So for instance, if we want 2.5% area lying in this left tail here, then we will denote this as alpha over two uh, or in our case, this is uh, chi squared with 10 degrees of freedom. And this percentile is uh, 0.025. Then this value here is, if we want 95% of area in the middle, it corresponds to chi squared. Uh, n minus one degrees of freedom, one minus alpha over two, which in our case, when degrees of freedom is equal to 10, has the following notation, uh, chi squared subscript degrees of freedom, 0.975. All right, and these two values, I have them somewhere here. So as you can see for uh, 10 degrees of freedom, we have some value here, which is equal to 20.5. And 
um, so this is 97.5th percentile, meaning that we have 95% in are in the middle plus 2.5% in the left tail, lying to the left of that point. And 2.5th percentile here is uh, equal to 3.25. So which corresponds to 2.5 percentile. And as we expected, this value here is less than um, uh, this value for 97.5 percentile. All right. Now let's come back. Um, let's come back here. Uh, so then if we want to find probability that n minus one s squared over sigma squared lies in interval from n minus one from um, chi squared percentile alpha over two with n minus one degrees of freedom to chi squared n minus one, one minus alpha over two percentile, then this probability is equal to one minus alpha, such that we have one minus alpha area lying in between our two tails. And in the tails, then we have, in the left tail, we have alpha over 2% lying, uh, not percent, alpha over 2 area lying in the left tail and alpha over 2 area lying in the right tail. All right, now uh, let's use the following transformation. Since we are trying to build a confidence interval for sigma squared, um, let's, uh, let's divide everything by n minus one s squared. So we will obtain the following expression, chi squared n minus one alpha over two divided over n minus one s squared less or equal than one over sigma squared. Um, so we'll have chi squared n minus one degrees of freedom, one minus alpha over two divided over n minus one s squared. So this probability is equal to one minus alpha. Now flipping our inequalities, we'll get probability that sigma squared, now this value uh, will be on the right, uh, is less or equal than n minus one s squared over uh, chi squared n minus one degrees of freedom alpha over two, less or equal than n minus one s squared over chi squared with n minus one degrees of freedom and one minus alpha over two percentile. Okay, uh, so uh, we can check whether we made a mistake here. We didn't make any mistakes since uh, this is smaller percentile corresponding to smaller value of chi squared. This is in denominator, meaning that this value is going to be larger than this one. All right, then uh, if we would like to build one minus alpha multiplied by 100% CI confidence interval for population variance, then its left end point is N minus one sample variance over chi squared one minus alpha over two percentile, and the right end point is n minus one s squared over chi squared with n minus one degrees of freedom, alpha over 
tools percentile. All right, so as we said in previous lectures, and we will be uh, one minus alpha percent multiplied by 100% confident that our uh, interval covers true population variance. Okay, guys, now this will conclude our video on estimation of population variance.